Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, welcome uh, to Bucharest FP uh, presentation. Uh, I'd like to introduce Tran Sherbanuza, who's uh, a colleague of mine at RV. He works on the K verification language program and how to call it compiler. Uh, he's a K lead there. He's been working on it for a very long time and since his uh, PhD uh, in, in the US, maybe even before that a bit. Well, yeah, my PhD was around K, so yeah, yeah so 2006, <laughs> something. For a very long time on K. Uh, he also teaches at the Bucharest University, uh, Haskell, among other things, as well as uh, parallel programs and uh, programming parallel and so on. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, I'll leave you to it, excuse me. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, although I'm teaching uh, Haskell, I'm basically teaching a, a starting level class on Haskell, so these are a little bit advanced. We were actually thinking of introducing uh, recursion schemes, maybe next year, to students. So, basically, you're my helpers <laughs> in this uh, endeavor. Uh, yeah, so please, uh, yeah. I have to admit I'm not an expert in recursion schemes. We started using them at RV and uh, I kind of like them a lot, but I'm not at the level where I could say that, okay, I know for every problem how to solve it with a recursion scheme. Probably there are not too many people who could claim that, but anyway, so what this presentation is meant as an introduction and okay, you might, I don't know exactly what, level we are talking about because we are a diverse audience. If you have any questions, please ask them as soon as you have them. Uh, because yeah, otherwise I would tend to speed up and speed up and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll reach the end of the presentation soon without uh, learning much. Okay, so uh, basically what we'll do is we'll start from a list because usually only these people are more familiar with the, at least with the idea of false reduces and things like that. Uh, maybe not as familiar with the idea of unfolds, but you'll see it's, uh, it's kind of a simple pattern there. And then uh, we'll try to talk a little bit about algebras in general, see how lists are an algebra, and then try to generalize everything that we did on lists on, let's say, arbitrary recursion patterns defined using this kind of algebras. Uh, some might sound a little bit strange if you're not, if you haven't read uh, much on recursion schemes, but you'll see it's not that strange. Okay, so let's start with lists. Um, we have uh, here a definition of lists. Yeah, so Basically, it's a simple idea that we have. Oh, you don't see the pointer. Well, okay. never mind. Um, so lists are either the empty list or an element put on top of the list. And that's usually what is called the constructive view of a list, because we say the lists are constructed from the empty list by adding elements to it. And then this constructive view is represented by these two uh, constructors or operators, okay? And then we also have the uh, destructive view of lists where we say that, okay, if I have a list, then okay, if it's empty, I, it's just empty, but if not, I can dis decompose it into the, its first element and the tail of the list. Okay. And uh, we'll see that, okay, it's important to fix these two concepts because uh, now we get into some, some idea of faults and I don't know, if you know about Haskell and other, other uh, functional languages, you know that there are a lot of faults like the left fault, right fault, whatever. Uh, there, there are even uh, infix faults and so on. Uh, the idea is that uh, the right fault in this case I think in Haskell, but also in other languages, follows somehow the structure of the list. So basically, uh, because when you see here, so what we do is that 
we have an operator telling us how to add the current element to a result and obtain a new result, and we have an initial result or starting value. And then what fault does is basically replacing the constructor of the list by the operator, the binary operator, and replacing the empty uh, list constructor by the initial value. Okay, and that's why we say that it follows the structure. It's more or less basically just mapping these constructors into the given values. Okay, and that's why we, well, this is more interesting for our purpose here than other kind of faults, which are also interesting in other contexts. Okay, and we say that because of this, because it changes the constructors by operators, it matches this idea of the constructive view of the list. In particular, if we take a fault with the list constructor and the empty list, we get the same list we started with. So, so far so good? good. Okay, and uh, a couple of examples. Uh, we have some examples usually with monoids. Basically, we say that if I have a monoid operation and a neutral element, I can do a fault and then I get an interpretation of uh, the list in that monoid. So for example, the sum is a fault with plus starting with zero. Product is fault with star starting with one. And in general, for any monoid, concat, m concat of the monoid, it's a fault starting with the empty value of the monoid and using uh, m of n for the uh, operation. And then, okay, we can go on and uh, do some more interesting things. So we can say that map is a fault, and that probably a lot of you are familiar with this. We just say that if I have uh, the elements that are already transformed, and I have the new element, then I would transform the new element according to f and compose it to the uh, list of already transformed elements and start with the empty list. I can also do length, where I say, well, I don't care about the elements, I just care about uh, the number of them. So I start with zero, and whenever I have a new element, I add one to the uh, number I already computed. Okay, and then, okay, there is a universality uh, result on uh, false, saying that basically any recursive function on lists can be rewritten as a fault. We won't go into that. It's not important for this talk. Uh, but yeah, just to get an idea, we have reverse, which some of you might know that it can be easily written as a left fault. Okay, doesn't matter if you don't know that, but we, what we can do here is by using uh, higher order functions, what we do is we compute a new function, okay, and this function is, okay, let's say we start with the identity, and then when I have an, uh, a new element, and I have a result function here, what we do, we say that, okay, given an L, a list, I would apply this function which reverses the list to x followed by L. Okay, and what this does is that basically this computes a function which given the empty list as a seed, uh, for this would actually reverse our original list. There is some way how to do this basically for any recursive function, how to achieve a fault, but again, it's not that important for our particular use case. Okay, so we're okay with faults. Examples, I guess we can, you can probably think of uh, your own folding examples. Now, uh, kind of dual to, to fold, we have the idea of unfold, which, uh, so okay, if we think that fold reduces a list to a value, unfold basically takes a seed value and builds a list out of it. And the way it does it, you see that we have that function that from a seed, from a given seed, it either doesn't do it, 
anything or it extracts an element and gives you the next thing. Okay? And now if we look at the definition, it's, much, it's the simplest place to look at the definition of unfolds. What we do is uh, I say I given an F and an initial seed, I look at the application of left to the seed. And if that is nothing, then I just put the empty list. It means that I, I'm done. I, I cannot continue anymore. But if I produce an element and the next seed, then I extract that element and I say, OK, now compute the rest of the list starting from the next seed. OK? And as before, so this is dual to fold. Uh, therefore, it matches this idea of the destructive view on list. So if the uncons that we mentioned about uh, earlier, which gives us for a list maybe the first element and the tail, if I use that as the driving function of unfold, I get the original list back. Okay? So it's the same, but the other way around. Okay, now we have some interesting examples for unfold too. Maybe even interest, more interesting than the ones for fold because those maybe are useful. So uh, there is the, uh, well, yeah, I think unfold can easily be used to produce infinite lists. Fold can be used too, but okay. For example, we have repeat. If you know repeat in, uh, in Haskell, it basically produces an infinite list of the element given as, a, uh, as an argument. So repeat of A would be the list of A, uh, the infinite list of A's. How we do this with, as an unfold? We say that, okay, I have the driving list which given an A, produces A as an element, and then reverse the C back to A. So this will basically unroll and will give us the infinite list of A's. Now we have a, a, a bounded version of uh, repeat, which is replicate. Replicate, what, what it does is that given a number n and an a, it produces that many, so it produces a list with a repeated of n times. So how we do this? We say that, OK, if uh, we have a driving, an, uh, an unfolding function, g, and we say that, okay, if G is zero, then I stop. If not, then I produce an A, and I uh, decrement the number of, uh, uh, the number of times. So this would be now my new C. So basically, we'll start with G, uh, we'll start with N, we'll produce an A, we'll become N minus one, we'll produce an A, and so on until it gets to zero. I guess technically we might have put if n is less than zero than nothing to make sure that it won't loop for negative values, but okay. That should be just, right? Uh, GN should be yeah. just a. Should be just. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, should I mention that I haven't tried this? <laughs> okay. Well, if you noticed other things, please. Let me know that uh, if you would let me know, I know that you're following. So uh, we'll, we'll have some, uh, some feedback. Time check the code before you think. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So yeah, it's a just there, of course. Now, iterate. Iterate is uh, an interesting function. Basically, given, given a function and an element, it produces the list of uh, applying f to the element uh, an infinite number of times. So basically, you'll get uh, iterate f of a would get a, f of a, f of f of a, and so on. Okay, and this is very simple to express as an unfold because I say given a as a seed, I produce a, and then I give you f of a as the next seed, and this will produce f of a, and it will give you f of f of a as the next seed, and so on. Um, okay, and then, well, we can also get map as an unfold. It's not as interesting. We say if the list is empty, then nothing. If I have an element and the rest of the list, then I produce f of x, and I give you the rest of the list to process. What is more interesting is this zip here. So uh, if I want to do a zip between a's and b's, then I have this unfolding function applied to the pair of a's and b's. 
And the arm folding function says, okay, if either of them is empty, then nothing, I stop. If I have one element, at least one element in each, then I produce the pair of two as the first element of uh, my list, and then I give you the seed composed of the tapes. Okay, and you can imagine that this would basically zip the two lists together. So we're cool up to here. Again, please stop me if. Uh, uh, okay, and we also have this idea of refolds, and I think uh, the way they were putting it in one of the papers was that uh, I think it, precisely in the the paper that gave the title of the of the talk about uh, bananas uh, and other things. So uh, they were saying that okay, when you combine a fold and unfold, basically your algorithm is of the shape of a list in this case, so the shape of the structure. So because, like, if, and if we look at the examples, we, we can see why, why is that happening. So for example, if we want to do factorial, what we do is basically we unfold a number to get a list of, uh, of uh, its elements from n to 1. And then when we fold it with multiplication. So in some sense, we, our tree, our uh, computation tree, has now the shape of a list. OK, and then again, similarly here, basically, if I want to get the sum of squares up to n, then I have an unfolding function which stops at 0. And then again, this is just, yeah, just, just. It's, I copy it from the same place. So. Uh, so the g of n will produce the square of n, and then will give me as the next seed n minus 1. So you can think of this as giving me the list of squares, and then I fold it with plus, and I get the, uh, the result. OK, and then this is a more interesting example. Uh, what we do here. So we want to obtain filter of a list. So I want to get all the elements of the list satisfying t. OK, and the, the trick here is, uh, OK, this fold is nothing special. This fold is just a concatenation. Yeah, it's basically selecting it's what I think it's called a cat, maybe. cat maybe. Yeah, it's saying that, OK, if I have uh, nothing, I don't modify the list. If I have an element, then I put it on top of the list. OK, what is more interesting is this uh, unfolding function, saying that OK, it stops at the empty list. But then if uh, x is, uh, if p holds on x, then I select x as part of uh, my interesting uh, uh, element. So, and if not, I put nothing. So what this will be, uh, this function will be doing will put the replacing things for which p doesn't fall with nothing and keeping the others with just in a list. And then this other one is doing the cat making. OK, again, they're not important, but I thought they're interesting. I think we can live along even without them. OK, so we're ready for the next uh, stage. We got an idea of this. Uh, OK, uh, this is just the definition. can probably ignore most of it. But what's interesting, this is, I, I just took the first paragraph from the Wikipedia, uh, saying that, OK, the idea of algebra in general and universal algebra is that it studies algebraic structures as an object of study, not particular algebra. So basically, is not studying particular groups, for example, but is studying the theory of groups. Yeah, it's not start studying particular monoids, but it talks about monoids in general and things like that. Okay, so and in order to to do that, basically it's concerned with the idea of describing a structure, so giving the type of a structure, and okay, this is usually named the signatures. So we'll get symbols for the operations we can perform. And we'll get uh, symbols for the types, if I have mul uh, multiple types. Uh, and then we have the idea of an algebra, which is an implementation. It's a model of this signature. So basically, the 
symbols here for sorts become sets or types. And the symbols for operations become actual functions interpreting. And we'll get to some examples because yeah, the definition is kind of dry. Uh, in Haskell, it's very nice to think of, uh, of algebraic types like uh, data types. Because, uh, and uh, you'll see here that it's a little bit different than how we think of a list in general because we also have a type for the list itself. Yeah, so I'm saying that I have a list-like uh, structure uh, depending on a type A of the elements and the type list for the list. If I have a constructor, a new constructor, and a cons constructor taking an element and the list. And uh, yeah, I'm deriving functor here. You'll see soon why that. Uh, and we, will, we can talk more about why we do that. OK, and uh, now maybe this was not necessary on this slide, but I had to introduce somewhere these two things. So I said, why not doing it here? Um, we have this type, but we kind of are interested primarily in a canonical representation of this type. So we, we, we have this type generic for list-like structure, but I'm actually interested in lists. Okay, and then I have to somehow link lists with these structures. Okay, and the way I do this is basically I'm saying, okay, if I have a list, I can give you a list-like structure which for lists has this type, the type of list. Yeah, and uh, I'm doing it, I'm saying that, okay, empty list is just nil, and if I have A, A, S, then I do a cancel A and A, S. Kind of simple. And uh, I do it also the other way around for the idea of uh, decomposition. So I'm saying, okay, if I have a list-like structure having lists as a carrier sort, I can give you uh, a list, and I uh, basically do the opposite transformation from the above. Okay, and if you look carefully and check, you can see that uh, these are inverse one to another. So this is what is called an isomorphism. And it's really nice that we have that. We'll use it in the C++. Uh, yeah. Would it be fair to say that the list data type is the equivalent, uh, the equivalent of the signature from the previous slide? And the two functions are a way to go to and from a concrete algebra? Yes. <laughs> no, really, really, yeah. You see, actually, I think some of it is described in the next slide, and some of it is described on a couple of slides uh, later. So getting to your question, yeah, so we have a signature is kind of a data type deriving factor. We'll see soon why deriving factor, but it's important. Um, and then. Uh, an algebra or a list-like structure basically gives you a carrier type. You choose a carrier type. In this case, it was for list, but you can choose any carrier type. And it gives you a transformation from list. So basically what this gives you is that it gives you an interpretation for nil in the carrier, and it gives you an interpretation from a cons of an A and a carrier in the carrier. So in some sense, it's in, it interprets the symbols as functions yeah, by giving uh, uh, a morphism, a uh, function like this. OK, and uh, yeah, so uh, for example, embed, the function that we talked about earlier, satisfies this, uh, this type here. <coughs> so basically, embed is actually an algebra from this point of uh, view. And we can also define all kinds of other algebras, and we're basically defining things which look alike the functions that we've been using earlier. So we have an algebra for doing sums over a list. We're saying that the sum algebra for interprets nil as zero, and interprets cancel A and B as A plus B. 
notice that what we did is basically we constrained the carrier of our list like structure to be the same as the type of elements and to be a number. Okay? And then if we do this, basically we, we can say that, okay, I have an algebra interpreting list like structures as numbers and interpreting nil as zero and cans as plus. And I have another algebra, the product algebra, interpreting nil as one and cans as multiplication. Okay, we're still, please ask if you're is this uh, not a natural uh, transformation? Hmm? This looks like a natural transformation. Uh, is it a natural transformation? Maybe a well, I think so because we have, you'll see, yeah, we, I think in the mm, diagram, next diagram, you'll see, it, yeah, it, it kind of, you have well, a diagram that commutes, which is exactly like natural transformation. Uh, I think here I'm missing uh, a definition. But it's okay, we can. Uh, so uh, the idea is that similarly to how we did for the algebra for sum and for product, we do, can do one for reverse, which is kind of mimicking the way we did reverse when we did the uh, folds and unfolds. So basically it would be reverse. Uh, I started. So reverse algebra of cons of an A, and here it would be a function, like the reverse function. This will be a new function, so it would be a, a function which given an L calls reverse on A L. So if you remember, this is the function we are using for reverse when we did the fold to obtain reverse. But yeah, again, it's not that important, but since it's missing. Okay, now we get to the diagram, which uh, I think it looks like a, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's an ASCII diagram. <laughs> uh, because I wrote my slides in Markdown, and there is no way to do lines in Markdown. Uh, you see, it would be interesting when I'm trying to draw uh, uh, slanted lines. <laughs> uh, but okay, I, I only have to draw two, so we're fine. Okay, so now, uh, now we have uh, we have an interesting diagram here. So first of all, we are interested in functions folding lists to um, a value. Okay, and uh, we have the embed and project functions which we defined earlier, We're linking us the uh, giving us basically an algebra and a coalgebra for lists. And then we have this algebra, so about algebra for B, which could be that sum algebra or product algebra or reverse algebra. So basically a way saying that uh, if I have a structure with carrier B, I have an interpretation of the lists over B into B. Okay, now the idea is that we want to obtain this thing here from list of A to B. Uh, and then we have some interesting things uh, here. So okay, this is given, those two are given. We, we're looking for this, and we know that we would also have this thing because we asked lists to be a functor. So what we'll get is we will take this arrow and move it here, and will be F map of, of, of the arrow. And now this is, I think, the natural transformation uh, relation here, saying that if I go through uh, embed and then through fold, should be the same as if I go through the F map of the fold and through this B algebra. Okay. And moreover, there is an initiality result saying that there exists only one arrow here making this happening, but it's more than that. We have this relation here, and now since we know that project 
it's an inverse of embed, we can compose with project to the right. And what happens is that that embed there disappears and we'll get a formula, a recursive formula for fold. So we have fold is B algebra composed with F map of the fold composed with project. And this allows us to get a definition in Haskell, which looks like this. So a fold of a B algebra is some function, go, with go can be obtained as B algebra composed with F map of go composed with project. Okay, so it's not only that we have a, let's say, theoretical result saying that there exists a unique function there, we actually have the function uh, and we can use it. Okay, and what is nice to, to note here is that if we look at this definition, this doesn't depend on the actual structure of the list. It depends on two things. It depends on the idea of project, which links us the canonical model to the list-like structure associated with And it depends on the fact that the list-like structure is a functor. Yeah, so we can do this. Keep that in mind. Okay, and then with this uh, definition, we can say that, uh, okay, we can have the sum of elements of a list, which would be a fold using that I should be should be an L. I change it, but I didn't change it everywhere. So that function for that algebra corresponding to sum, let's get back to it a little bit. So we had this sum algebra and product algebra, and then the reverse algebra. Now we can use them and we can say that sum is a fold of the sum, sum algebra, product is a fold of the product algebra, and reverse it's a fold of the reverse algebra and then apply it to the empty list to actually get uh, get a function. And these are actually the Haskell, well, okay, they don't define it like this in Haskell, but you'll get the equivalent by doing this. We're still, okay? Ah, so, <laughs> so, and so, okay. Well, if, we, if you think this is interesting, and then let's look at uh, what is a list-like co-algebra. And okay, it's, I just copied the previous three slides and I changed the arrows. Uh, okay, maybe I also updated the examples. But okay, the idea is that we have the same definition of the list-like structure, but now we have an arrow from the carrier or in, uh, a way to decompose the carrier into a list-like uh, structure. So basically, given the carrier, I could either have a nil or a cons of an element and the carrier. So that's, that's the idea of the decomposition, the structure. Okay, and then if we accept this definition, then we can say, okay, we have lists themselves which are uh, are a are co-algebra by using project. So project will take this uh, carrier, the carrier of the list, and give me <coughs> a nil, if the list is nil, or a cast of the first element and the tail. Okay, but well, then we can also do the same for, uh, I think here, again, so is it? Uh, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter, I can write it. Uh, it's, 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 it's fine, but I, I, because I think you see there are some things here, so maybe. But okay, so we have the, for example, the example for iterate. So I can say that the, um, given a function, f, I can give you a co-algebra from having uh, as a carrier a, okay, and interpreting it, it's a list-like co-algebra. And what uh, the way I do it is I say, okay, if I'm given an A, I can give you A as the first element, and then I'll give F of A as the next seed, if we follow the same intuition as we used earlier. Okay, and similarly for zip, here is basically I'm giving a co-algebra, having as a carrier the type of pair of lists, 
which is this is kind of like a seed for us, and saying that okay, if either of the list is empty, then uh, I, I'll get nil as a result. And the other equation two, which we can write here. So let's see if I can write it nicer this time. So if I have zip for algebra of x, x, s, y, y, s would be a cons of x, uh, y, and x, s, y, s. So I'm producing an element of the type pair of AB and the reminder of the list. And now I think it might be a good time to make the comparison with the young fold. I don't know. If you remember, OK, let's see. If you remember unfold, unfold true, was taking as argument uh, something of B going to maybe of A and B, and then uh, giving a function from B to list of A's. You remember this? And now the question is, OK, uh, yeah, but for us, a co-algebra here would be actually a function from B to list of A and B. OK, and the question is, uh, why uh, is this OK? Is this why it was here? Maybe why it was it here? Well, okay, here is maybe because we didn't have this type, and it's much simpler to express it with maybe. But is it the same thing to give a function from B to maybe of A B, or to give one from B to list of A B? Maybe. <laughs> uh, well, it's it's kind of simple because we can say we can express what maybe is. So we can say maybe of A and B is either nothing or just A and B. And now we can also look at list of A and B. And this would be either nil or cons of A and B. And um, we can see that this structure are in some sense equivalent because, OK, this here is just a, well, they are isomorphic in the sense that I can always take something. I can map nothing to nil. And I can map just A and B to cancel of A and B. And I can do the reverse. So, uh, and we can say that, OK, they used maybe of A and B here because they didn't have this type. So it was much simpler to use what was already at them. Anyway, so we have the idea of a co-algebra, which is the dual of an algebra. And now we can draw another nice diagram uh, saying, uh, OK, well, we we have again embed and project, and uh, we have this a co-algebra, basically giving the seed. I produce an element at the next seed, maybe. Uh, and now I want to unfold it. So I want to get something from B to a list of A. Okay, and uh, we do something similar to what we did before. So basically. We say, OK, we would like to have the same nice uh, natural transformation condition. So basically, if I take uh, unfold and then project, so getting me from B to list of A and list of A, or I take this coalgebra uh, function and then 
the mapping of the unfold. I want to get the same thing. And now you guess we do the same trick as we did before. So we have this project here. We know that embed is an inverse. We compose with it to the left. And we get a recursion uh, equation for unfold. And we can extract the code, the Haskell code for it. And again, there is a result saying that there is a unique mapping from the final coalgebra, no, from any coalgebra to the final coalgebra. But yeah, that's maybe less important in this particular case because we already got the mapping. Uh, how we are with that? Uh, ah, okay, we're doing good. Okay, and then with this definition, which again does not depend on the structure, we can play around and get our uh, iterate function as an unfold over uh, the iterate coalgebra function. So basically, I think it's here it's written spelled out more properly. So iterate of f, it's an unfold over the coalgebra function given by f, which we defined on the previous slide. And zip, well, don't read this unless you like hurry. Uh, so zip of two lists, basically I'm doing the zip coalgebra, I'm doing an unfold of it, and then give it as an argument the pair of the uh, two lists. Okay? Please ask questions. Will be done soon otherwise. <laughs> Not so soon. Okay, so we are now at the third phase of our journey. But you probably already guessed from the previous phase. So we now are ready to generalize it to arbitrary uh, structures, arbitrary recursive structures. OK, so as we've seen earlier, we said that uh, the type of an algebra, it's a data type, algebraic data type, which is a factor. And now we say, OK, we consider that all algebraic data types, which are factors, are potential uh, types of algebras. And we have this idea of F algebra, so algebra given by such a factor. Okay, and then we say we can say that uh, the, an algebra, given a functor f, we will see later that we actually always use it as a functor, but in Haskell, it's harder to declare it as a functor. Well, okay, it used to be harder to declare it as a functor. Yeah, then people don't good. like it. it okay, good. so uh, an algebra given a functor f, representing the way to build the data type and the carrier is just a mapping from f of carrier to the carrier. If you replace that f with list of a, we get what we had earlier. And the coalgebra, given the functor f and the carrier, is a reverse mapping from the carrier to functor of carrier. OK, now we can look at the, some examples. We have the list, which now got an f because it's a functor. Uh, but yeah, basically, given A and a carrier, we have Miller cons of A and carrier. But similarly, we can think of a type of tree like, or binary tree like structures carrying information on nodes, saying that a tree is either empty or it's a node and it has uh, two carriers as the sub trees. Okay, and uh, something which I like a lot is that we can define uh, a language for expressions or expression-like structures. I can say that uh, an expression over a carrier is either an integer or a string or whatever we want that, uh, a variable, basically this one, and some operations we can do on, on expressions in general. No questions? Yeah. Good. OK, now a little bit of magic, Haskell magic. We need somehow a way to link 
well, you remember that when we did uh, the type for lists, we were saying that, okay, uh, uh, we, we want to actually use lists, the normal list, as the canonical model for this. And uh, a way to achieve that is this idea of having a base functor. And you, this has something like that. I don't know exactly how uh, uh, to read it. Well, I know how to read it. I say base t is something of a functor type. So it, it takes a type to another type. And uh, what we do here, for example, we say that, OK, the base of the list type is list f of a, yeah? which basically is, is giving us the functor which would represent the list-like structures. I'm giving the list, I, I'm giving the functor representing the list-like structures. That's one way, so basically going from the already defined type of lists to a recursive type, a signature-like type, an algebraic-like type representing them. There's also the other way around. So going from, uh, from a factor, more or less, we'll see later that it's, this will always be a factor. So going from, from a factor to the canonical type corresponding to that functor, which is basically taking a fixed point of the construction. Uh, and maybe here we'll, we can use a blackboard. But yeah, we, we can think of something like this. So if I take list f of a and I fix it, basically what happens is that the next argument of list f of a would be the type itself. Yeah, so in the end, what we get Ignoring some of the extra fix uh, and non-fix uh, constructors on types, maybe we will get something like, uh, let's say, fix of list f of a. It's list f of a and fix of list f of a. And which we, if we write it, would be either nil or the cons of A and fix fix of list F of A. And if we do it like this, and you think of this as a type my list, you'll see that this is exactly the recursive definition of lists. Okay, so basically that's what fix does. Fix takes a functor, which is open-ended in some sense, gives you the general type of list-like, tree-like, uh, f-like structures, and b builds you the type of terms, which is also the initial algebra for that type, in particular, or the final algebra, if you want. OK, so basically we have this, and we can think of the same for trees. I can take fix of 3f of a, and this will give me something which is isomorphic, if you don't want the same, what would give me the exact binary trees with labeled nodes. Or I can take fix of x f, and this would actually give me the terms, expression, representing expressions with plus and quantification of what it take, integers and variables. OK? And I need to drink something, because I'm getting dry. OK, so we have one way of getting from a canonical representation to getting the algebraic-like structure uh, of, his, of whom this is the canonical model, and the other way around, going from a factor to getting the uh, canonical model for that factor. Good. We're fine. And now, uh, we also have something nice here, saying that well, if I take the base of this canonical model, which I built with fix, of course I'll get the functor which helped me build it. And now we're actually kind of done. We'll be using exactly what we used before, but with this new algebraic higher level view. So we have uh, 
if I know that the base type of T is a functor, okay, then I can define a recursive scheme on T by giving a function project, by giving me a way to go from T to the base T. Okay, and then uh, in some sense, well, this is kind of giving me a co-algebra, if you think. But then, okay, we have this kata, and you uh, you know that I wrote here that for this kata, it's called kata because, well, in category theory, uh, the morphism, the unique morphism from the initial algebra to any other algebra, it's called a kata morphism, and the guy who implemented this liked the kind of category theory. Uh, and okay, it's not based on it. So okay, but we we see that it's exactly the signature for false. So we have uh, an algebra here because base T, if you remember, was the factor describing the structures, the T-like structures. So a function from that factor applied to A to A, which is exactly what, how we used to call before uh, an algebra, a base T algebra. Okay, and then we have T, which is our, uh, the thing for which base T is, uh, this is the canonical model for base T. And then we will get uh, a result. So we'll get a function from T to A. And this cat of F, it's exactly the definition we had before for fold, just for lists. So it's uh, F composed to a mapping of C composed with project. This one? Yeah, but the signature. Uh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I can, we can write a signature. Uh, I like that. I don't know why. Okay. So, since project is from T to base of TT, project would be from, in this case, list of A because that's T. to base list of A, list of A. But now if we remember that base of list of A was actually list F of A, so this is list F of A and list of A. So project is exactly our project from lists. As you can see also from the definition. So the definition is the same as the project function we've been using when we talked about lists. Okay. Is it? Can you repeat that in why you have base of T and T there? Well, you know, you have to, as Vlad told me, <laughs> you have to know for which T is base T, a base <laughs> of. Okay. of. <laughs> No, no, but okay, because the idea is that here you have a, from base T of A to A. So an algebra, of a T-like algebra, it's an algebra from B, base T, a function from base T of A to A. Okay, it's a, an algebra of carrier A and interpreting the base T-like operations to, uh, to A. Okay, and now when we have project, project, project is actually our initial, no, it's our final co-algebra. Yeah, and that's why it's going from T. So basically, we have the base T, which represents the type of T. Okay, now we have this function from T to base T of T, basically saying that this is the final co-algebra, interpreting actually T itself as a T-like structure. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. It's okay? Yes. Uh, can you write down the, the, kind, the new kind of, of uh, base in this generalized case? Because I think no, no, but base is the same. So base, uh, because we just introduced it here. So base is this. So base T, okay, base probably, okay, the, 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 the weird part is that there is no parenthesis required. So basically it's kind of like base T in parenthesis and then apply another T, right? That, that's well, what's but we are higher order, so <laughs> yeah, I guess. 
Yeah, so we, you can think of base t. So the way they define it there is that base t takes a type and gives you another type. And moreover, here we say that we require base t to actually be a factor. Okay? So then, yeah, you can think of parentheses around base t if you want. But again, think of base t as the factor, as the data type, defining t-like structures. Yeah? Replace it with list if, you, if it's easy. So base of t, think of it, for example, uh, as being list, list of a. Because it's defining list-like structures. What you have on the collection? Hmm? Well, what I have, yeah, something here, too. Don't you need some sort of polymorphic kinds for that base TD? I don't know, it works. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by polymorphic kinds? So I think the idea that uh, this is always kind of... Well, the first T is star star. And then we apply a star star, we replace uh, it into a star. No, I think no T, star. T, is, T is a concrete type, it's lists, for example. Uh, this is T. This yeah, is one. That's t. a star star. No, 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 no. Base T, it's a star star. But I, I, I added another argument. Oh, okay. Okay, so base T, okay. it would be a functor like constructor, type constructor. Base T would take another type, it will give me a concrete type. Okay. Okay, and then uh, this is also nice. So basically, okay, we have we have a way to say that some things are recursive, some concrete types are recursive by giving this uh, having the base for them and giving this function, but also any data type which is built using fix over a functor, it's also recursive because if you remember the definition of functor which I kind of skipped over. We have this here. So fix of f, it's putting a fixed constructor. And then I have the constructor r fix, which gives me back an f of fix of f. So in the case of base, let's see if I can write a type for that too. So if I have recursive of fix of f, If you remember, uh, so let's see. I have to have project from fix of f to base of fix of f and fix of f. That's how it says that. OK, but now we know that base of fix of f, it's actually f. Yeah, because we said that, OK, it's the base functor which is for which this is the canonical uh, algebra, canonical model. OK, and if this is f, then I have something from fix of f. I want to get an f of fix of f. And unfix happens to exactly do that. Unfix, given a fix of f, will give me f of fix of f. OK? Huh. Let's see if we can finish this. Uh, OK, and similar, copy the slide and change the arrows, hopefully right. Uh, we have generalized unfolds. So we have this idea of a core recursive type, a core recursive type given a base for the type, which should be a factor, and given an embedding from the base, uh, from the structure associated to the base of t to uh, t. This is actually an algebra, an algebra of carrier t for, uh, for base of t. Then I can do an unfold, which is called ana from anamorphism, anamorphism uh, which is uh, unique, uh, unique what? Unique morphism from an co-algebra to the final co-algebra. OK, so basically, this is the final co-algebra, t. OK, this is an algebra 
uh, this is a co-algebra saying that, uh, okay, I have from A to a T-like structure of A, so deco how to decompose A in a T-like structure, and this gives me a, a morphism, an, an arrow from A to the carrier of A to the carrier of the uh, final co-algebra, and it's the same as the definition we had for unfold for lists. If we look at it, because we said, okay, it's independent of the structure, that's why it's, it was useful. Okay, then uh, we can do the same thing here. We can say that, uh, okay, for lists, for example, can be seen as core recursive using embed as uh, the actual embed we had for list earlier. And if we want, we can write the same, but it's the same type as here. So embed for, let's write it again, maybe six in my mind at least. So OK, it would be from base of list and list to list. OK, and this, since this is actually list f, uh, list f of a, so basically, I have a function from list f of a and the list carrier to the list carrier, which is our embed, and it's also the initial algebra for lists. Uh, OK, and given that, then I have for free the unfold, the anamorphism. And similar for, uh, for a fixed point. So if I have the fixed point, fixed point is always co-recursive. Why? Because uh, the embedding will take base t of t, which is actually f of fix of f, and will take it back to fix of f. And this is exactly what fix does if we look back here. So fix will take an f of fix of f and give me a fix of f. So it's give me exactly the uh, algebra I'm looking for. OK, are we all tired? OK, now this is my nice arrow. Uh, well, you see, I had to do something. There, is, there was no way I could do it in ASCII better than this. Actually, I tried to do it without this, but it was looking upwards. And, uh, um, OK, so this is the idea of refold. And uh, refolds is when we actually unfold and fold it back. So uh, we unfold something in a structure, and we fold it back uh, from that structure. And this is represented by these things here. So basically, we have from A, we have a co-algebra. So basically, unfolding A to an F structure over A. And we have on the top a way to fold a B, an F structure over B into a B. So it's an algebra there. And now we would want to have something which takes us from A to B by doing this thing. So unfolding, OK, and then folding back. Uh, and uh, the reason for which I wrote that was that, OK, we said before that the refold, it's actually a composition of an, what? Of a fold with an unfold. Okay. But uh, in the, if you look in the definition, these definitions are taken from the recursion schemes package on, in Haskell. You get something like this, where you don't see actually the unfold and fold anywhere. You just say, this thing here, which is basically exactly this composition. So I'm trying to get this R, this refold of B A and A, B algebra and A co-algebra. And I say, OK, this is an R where R is obtained as doing, taking the algebra mapping, then taking a functor over R and then taking the algebra back to fold. Okay, now I was trying to think, okay, but how does this come 
to be where, where is the fold and unfold, where, where you can see it. And the, the nice thing is that, okay, since f is a functor, I can always get the canonical model of f, which is this fix. Okay, so because I have this, I also have a fold of B because I have uh, there an algebra, and an algebra will give me a fold, and I have an unfold of A coalgebra because I have a coalgebra, I get an unfold, so then I also get that thing. Okay, and we're kind of done. I just want to show you three examples. Not necessarily interesting, but I thought they were interesting. Uh, so one thing is I said I like expressions. One nice thing about, uh, I don't know, maybe you've all written interpreters, recursive interpreters at some point in, uh, in life, in playing. Uh, so the idea here is that we don't need to do them recursively anymore. We can, because we have this idea of folding, and the fold is actually over the expression-like uh, algebras, all we need is to give an interpretation, give an algebra for uh, expression-like structures of our type, of our resulting type. Okay, and if you look here, so we did something like this. So I said that given a mapping from variables to uh, values, to integer values, I want to interpret an expression, a term, as an integer, but I said a maybe integer because maybe not all of, all of my variables are defined. So I might have undefined variables. I'm not sure I'll get always an integer. OK, and I say, okay, I'll do this as a fold over this particular algebra, which is an algebra of the, over the carrier of maybe integers. And this if I like this. I say, OK, if I have a number, uh, OK, it's just of uh, that integer. If I have a variable, I look it up in the environment, and this gives me a maybe of uh, integer. And then for the op operations, basically I lift the operations to maybe, and I apply them on the particular values. OK, and you see no recursion here. It's just saying if this is how I interpret it over maybe integers. And I'll get the overall interpretation of terms into that for free. OK, here we, it was harder to find the. Uh, I have a question for the previous slide. Sure. So if you define an expression type that isn't the correct XF uh, type, you don't really need to define the instance for it, right? And convert it to base and from base to get the same thing, right? Like oh, you, you're saying if I'm actually defining expressions. So as that the, doesn't have the carrier typing. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, if I do. Yeah, that should be simple. So if I'm just saying uh, x is either, let's put different names, uh, e num of integer or e var of uh, string, string, okay, or uh, plus of x x. or times of x, x. Then I could say, OK, instance base x uh, instance type, no? So type, type instance. instance yeah. Type instance base x is uh, x, f, x, f. OK, and then when I'm saying I can say uh, instance recursive, because recursive I need for fold, recursive uh, x, where, and now I need to give the embed for recursive? Project. The project. OK, yeah, I did give the project. Anyway, I can keep the both of them, yeah. because, but yeah, uh, for recursive I think it's project. So project will basically map these things into f of these things. So 
it will be more or less like enum of i is num of i. Okay, and uh, here would be e var of x is var of x. And then uh, plus of e1, e2 would be uh, e1 plus e2. Yeah? Is it like this? I think something like that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, and we can also do it like this. If I have the type already defined and I want to get recursion over it, and I don't want to redefine it as a like this kind of algebraic uh, signature, I can always do something like this. I can define the type and then do the base thing trick and get my recursive uh, structure, schemes over it. Okay, and now, yeah, for this unfold, uh, we didn't have really good ideas. I tried to ask the Vlad, he had an idea, but I said it's too complex, and uh, this would work in some sense. So the idea here is that I have a, a list, and I want to build a balance tree over uh, the elements of this list, so basically a binary tree which is uh, balanced. Uh, you could think that maybe this is sorted, that I want to get a search tree, so which is, let's say, uh, with good access time. Um, and the idea here is that, okay, I, I have to give a co-algebra starting from uh, lists to tree-like structure over lists. And the idea is to split it in kind of half. Yeah, so whenever, so if I have a, an empty list, then okay, it's the empty node. I don't have anything interesting. But if I have a list which is not empty, then I try to split it in equal parts. And since uh, the division basically goes towards zero, uh, then I'm sure that if I divide this by two in the right side, I'll have at least one element, and the begin and end will be kind of like equal. So I can split the list in that size. I take the begin, I take the end, and I put the element as uh, in the node. And then the unfold will take care that the tree is uh, expanded and will look in the end as, uh, as balanced as intended. OK? Yeah. OK, and the final example, which, OK, I must admit I saw it somewhere, but I tried to rewrite it uh, here uh, from scratch, is that uh, I can think of quicksort. Again, we, we, when I said, told about refaults, that the idea of refaults was that the computation has the shape of a structure. And in this case, the computation for quicksort has a tree-like structure. Yeah, because we always split it two, and I, do, I sort the first, I sort the second. So if we think the computation is a tree. So then what we do is that we do a refold where we use a tree in between. And if you look at it, it's kind of quite straightforward once we have this idea what, what these two things will do. So basically, the unfolding operation, the quadrigraph operation, will basically uh, take the list, okay, choose A as a pivot, partition the list over the elements lower than A, greater than A, and put it in the, uh, in the sides of the node. Okay, and this, the unfold then will basically complete the tree, so we'll get a tree where all these are expanded into other trees. So when, when we come back and uh, we fold it, we basically just do a fold. So we take the elements from the left-hand side and append A and the elements from the right-hand side. Okay. I think there are probably nicer examples than this, but this is nice enough. It's not non-trivial, so it shows kind of the point. OK, kind of, we're kind of over time. So, uh, now you can go and implement everything as using recursion schemes. Some things we've been doing at uh, 
but uh, RV in our code is that we, we use it for visitors and transformers and it's really nice. There are also other structures, a lot of other structures here which allow you to do various things, to exit early, to choose uh, different uh, things, and, but they're more or less based on the same ideas. So, but yeah, if you're interested and you're using them, please read also about these other things because they could help you achieve your things uh, faster. And yeah, I, I left here an open-ended questions. I, I'm not sure exactly how we would do mutually recursive data types might be interesting. I, I haven't really thought about it, but I think I heard that people have thought about it and it's not easy. And then here are some things used for this presentation, it may be useful for virtual reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? Or we could also discuss it like more informally. Of course, the slides will be up online soon. Yeah. Maybe we'll even fix some of the spellings. <laughs> of the types, <laughs> mostly. Uh, OK. Well, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>